So we're here at the EHA meeting and there's quite a few presentations that have been very exciting and will continue to be exciting throughout the week. Uh, one of the uh, best topics for me these days is newly diagnosed multiple myeloma. We're seeing data that quad therapies in transplant ineligible as well as transplant eligible has been performing quite amazingly with overall response rates of greater than 95%. In progression-free survival uh, time points, it's greater than three to four years. In fact, uh, in the Perseus study, which we will have an update here, we see that uh, the four-year PFS is over 84%, which is quite amazing. What we also have is the first presentation from Emrose, looking at esituximab, um, Velcade, and uh, lenalidomide and dexamethasone versus the triplet of VRD showing an improvement in PFS, an improvement in overall response rate, and most importantly in my mind is an improvement in MRD negativity. Um, and this study has a proposed P PFS that might be upwards of 80 to 90 months. And that's for a newly diagnosed transplant ineligible population. That's really uh, amazing. We also saw data from the benefit study. And in the benefit study, the IFM randomized patients to a quadruplet of esituximab, bortezomib, lenalidomide, dex, or ESA, VRD versus ESA um, lenalidomide index, or ESA RD, so excluding the proteasome inhibitor. And we see that actually a quadruplet is probably of, be of benefit. Although there's no uh, PFS difference at the current time, we think it will uh, with longer follow up, but there's a marked difference in MRD negativity of the quadruplet versus the triplet. Pretty amazing. We're also going to see data on. Uh, uh, CAR T cell updates, we're going to get an R, uh, update from Arcelex, looking at their novel phase one study of 40 patients, follow up of at least um, a year or more for all patients. Um, and what they've shown in their abstract is a PFS at 24 months of 50, 56%, so a more than two years PFS, which is also quite exciting. Um, they have a novel therapeutic of a small molecule binder to BCMA, and they've also um, sh uh, shown that in their uh, current 40 patient trial, there has been no late neurotoxicity, which we're all excited about. We'll also have updates from um, the gray cell with the dual targeted CD19 BCMA from Juan Du, um, showing very high response rates in newly diagnosed multiple myeloma. Um, and we have quite a few updates actually with bi-specific T cell engagers in the uh, relapse refractory setting. The two I'll call out is one, the ABV383 molecule, which is now showing a PFS of 65%, CRS of 43%, with only 5% of that being 2%. Um, and that drug is given on a Q four week basis with um, only one, the first dose, full dose, being um, you know, a subject with CRS and requiring a hospital stay, so very convenient. And the second one of uh, Limvoseltamab showing a PFS of 71% and a CRS just under 50%. So two really nice molecules in patients uh, uh, receiving BCMA targeted by specific in the relapse refractory setting. So it's been a very exciting meeting, but all for newly diagnosed early relapse and for the late immunotherapies and multiple myeloma.